Karen enjoyed going to school. She had plenty of friends. To me, to me! Back to me! She was in the school netball team. And her artwork was so good that Miss Pico would often give it a star. Hello, darling. Good day. Not bad. I got another gold star for this. Oh, my word. Look at that. It's a giant starfish fighting an octopus. Oh, yes, I can see that now. Well, let's put it with the others, shall we? Right, let's try it here, shall we? But there was one thing about school that Karen did not like at all. Well, it's Thursday, so we all know what that means. Time to write a story. Karen did not like writing stories. Today I want you to write about losing something. It really doesn't matter what it is. In fact, she hated it so much that she usually tried to think of some way of getting out of doing it. But it can be anything at all. And then think why it would matter to you to lose it. So. The first thing to decide is what you've lost and... One moment, Karen. And why it mattered so much and what you did about it. All right? Off you go. You have 30 minutes. Yes, Karen? I've got a bit of a headache. A headache? Yes. A bad headache? Well, it's quite bad. Do you think it's bad enough you ought to go and lie down in the sick room for a while and have a rest? Thanks, miss. Sit down, Karen. Karen, you had a headache last Thursday. The Thursday before that, you thought you were going to be sick. And the Thursday before that, you said you'd hurt your fingers and couldn't hold a pen. There is nothing wrong with you, Karen. Honestly. If you spent half as much time writing a story as you do making up these excuses, I just want you to write about something you've lost. Think of anything you've got that's valuable. Imagine what it would be like to lose it and write it down. There's nothing difficult about it. But Karen found it very difficult. She could never think of anything to write. Bernard had already finished his story, but of course he had more time than anyone else. Thanks. It was very kind of him to lend her his watch, Karen thought. But even a magic watch couldn't help with this. She could probably sit for days without thinking of anything. Try the library. What? The library. If you look at the books, it might give you some ideas. Oh, right. Bernard, just get on with your work. In the library, Karen found books about lost treasure, lost dogs and lost parents. Lost dinosaurs, lost paintings and lost swords. Nothing fell when you were using Bernard's watch. But when she sat down to read, she felt tired. And decided to go for a walk to wake herself up. It was always fun walking into town when you had Bernard's watch. You could go into a clothes shop. And even when you couldn't buy anything, you could try on as many things as you liked. However long you took, and however many clothes you tried, the assistant never complained. But on her way back to school... Karen 
saw there was going to be a terrible accident. was going to fall backwards, and if the man landed on the road... ..the car would never be able to stop in time. She thought of telling the policeman, but there was no time. From the hardware shop, she borrowed a piece of rope and a hook. Nothing falls when time stops, so Karen could lift the rope, push it out of the window, hook one end to the ladder, and tie the other end to the desk. Everything looked all right, now it was time to check that it worked. But the watch was not in her pocket. It wasn't anywhere. Oh, some sort of problem. Don't worry, that's what we're here to sort out. Now. It was a moment before Karen realised who it was. It must be the man who had given Bernard the watch. You're not Bernard Beasley? No. But I gave Bernard the watch. What are you doing with it? Karen explained that Bernard had lent her the watch in school that morning. Oh, I see, and now you're trapped. Yes. Mm, well, it does happen occasionally. That's why we have the alarm system. I'm so glad. So if you give me the watch, I'll see what I can do. Give you the watch? That's right, so I can fix it. But I, I can't give you the watch. I've lost it. Lost it? Where? I don't know. Oh. That doesn't mean you can't help me, does it? Well, it does make it a bit difficult. If the watch isn't working, you see, that's our responsibility, and we send someone out to fix it. But if you lose it... Could you help me find it? Well, not really. I mean, I don't know where it is. Sorry. So you're going to leave me here? I don't have any choice, do I? Oh, I do have one suggestion. Go and ask Bernard. He should be able to help. Karen walked back to school. She had looked everywhere for her watch, but hadn't found it. And without it, she was trapped. She would be frozen forever in the same moment of time. All around her, the people would stay the same, while she... It was awful. Her parents would never see her again. We're never going to see her again, are we? But we'll never forget her. As long as we have bees. Oh! Karen, my poor Karen! Never mind, darling. We'll have another child. Maybe a boy this time. And Bernard. I don't believe it. She's lost it. My watch. My wonderful watch and she's lost it. 
how could anyone do something like that? I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. And what would happen to Miss Pika? The police are here. What's going to happen to me, Headmaster? It'll be prison, I'm afraid. <laughs> She was in your class when she disappeared, you see, and she was your responsibility. Yes, yes, I know. But surely they'd understand. Now, come along. You're going to have to be very brave. All the other children will be watching, remember? The man had told her that Bernard could help. But how could Bernard do anything? He was frozen like everyone else. He was... But then I remembered that the best way to find something you lost is to start in the last place you saw it and go through everything you did next. That's what she had to do, Karen thought. She started by going to the library. And then she went back into town. She checked everywhere she had been in the clothes shop When she came out, she remembered she had seen the man on the ladder, moved the paint pot, and then gone to get some rope. No, before the rope, she had walked over to see how fast the car was going. She had looked inside. Karen could not have been more pleased. the watch back. It's all right. I found it. Found what? No talking, please, Bernard. Just get on with your work. I'll tell you later. Don't forget to put your names at the top. And not only had she found the watch, Karen realised, but she knew now what her story was going to be about. This morning. It's rather good. Miss Pico said she thought it was the best she had read for a long time. Thank you, Miss. But I'm glad you got back. From being trapped in time. Oh, that. You wouldn't want to be stuck like that forever, would you? No, no, I wouldn't. And Karen was inclined to agree. Oh. 